Um, friends, we, we shall continue our discussion on equilibria criteria of stability. Today we will cover or we will address the following problems. The basic definitions of the tangent stability limit, the meaning of critical clearing angle and critical clearing time. Then we shall study the effect of fault clearing time on tangent stability limit. Next we shall study the effect of type of fault on stability. When we talk about the type of fault on stability, we sh I shall introduce the concept of fault shunts. Then we will study the effect of grounding on stability. Now, before I address these issues, I would like to mention that this subject has been very well addressed in power system stability written by Edward Wilson Kimbark. There are three volumes, volume 1, volume 2 and third volume is now known as synchronous machines. These basic concepts are very well addressed in volume 1. <coughs> now, let us define what the tangent stability limit. We have defined earlier the tangent stability. Now, today we will emphasize on this word tangent stability limit. The tangent stability limit refers to the amount of power that can be transmitted through some point in the system with stability when the system is subjected to severe aperiodic disturbance. That here The stability limit is referred in terms of the amount of power. That is, what is the power in megawatts that can be transmitted and this is referred to some point in the system. Now, the, the, the emphasis here is on some point in the system. Now, if you take a machine infinite bus system, then there is only one transmission line and therefore, whatsoever power that can be transmitted on that line with stability becomes the tangent stability limit. However, when I consider a multi machine system, okay, in that system, this limit refers to a point in the power system. That is, there may be number of transmission lines and you may refer that in this particular transmission line, how much power can be transmitted for a given operating condition with given type of severe disturbance, given type of severe disturbance here. Now, here we emphasize the word aperiodic, the disturbance is, disturbance comes not in periodical manner, but it comes in a periodic manner, it comes and goes. It is not actually that after every 5 seconds the disturbance keeps on coming. Okay. This is what is the meaning of the tangent stability limit. Therefore, any power system when we operate, we have to operate below tangent stability limit okay. so that it can withstand the, the particular type of disturbance for which the system is designed. Now, next term is the critical clearing angle. Uh, this critical clearing angle is specifically referred to a machine infinite bus system because in a multi machine system you will have number of angles right and therefore the definition uh, to a multi machine system is not that easily available. Now, for a given system and for a given initial load there is a critical clearing angle. If the 
actual clearing angle is smaller than the critical value, the system is stable and if larger, the system is unstable. I will explain this point in detail okay, in our further discussion. That here the meaning is that there is some <coughs> critical clearing angle and actual clearing angle if it is less than this value system is stable. In case the actual clearing angle is more than the critical clearing angle system will become unstable. Similarly, we define another term critical fault clearing time. Again for a given system and for given initial loading there is a critical fault clearing time. If actual fault clearing time is smaller than the critical value, the system is stable. If larger, then the system is unstable. Now, this definition is applicable to machine infinite bus system or a multi machine system. Because whenever a system is operating okay, and a fault occurs on a particular element of the system, then this fault is cleared by removing the faulted element by operating the circuit breaker at the two ends. And therefore, there is certain time required to clear this fault. In case this actual fault clearing time is less than the critical clearing time, system is stable, otherwise it is unstable. Further, if suppose the critical clearing time for a system comes out to be say 0.2 second and actual fault clearing time is say 0.1 second, then the difference 0.1 second is called the stability margin. Okay? Therefore, we have been discussing in these days in terms of what is the stability margin and stability margin can be quantified in terms of difference in the critical clearing time for the system and actual fault clearing time because actual fault clearing time depends upon the operating time of the protection system and circuit breaker fault interruption time. Now, let us understand what is the effect of fault clearing time on tangent stability limit. Now, here when I say it is a tangent stability limit, it means it is a certain amount of power that can be transmitted without loss of stability. The tangent stability limit depends on type of fault and the duration of fault. We very we shall study these aspects type of fault and duration of fault. The power limit can be determined as a function of clearing angle. Suppose it is a machine infinite bus system, we can find out the tangent stability limit or power limit as a function of clearing angle and clearing time can be found by solving the swing equation up to the time of fault clearing. That is if I want to know, know the tangent stability limit as a function of fault clearing time. The approach we will discuss here, but for a machine infinite bus system the simple approach is that you first apply the equilibrium criteria, find out for a given power what is the critical clearing angle and then once you know the angle, we solve the swing equation up to the up, up to the fault clearing angle and corresponding to that we read the value of time and that becomes our critical clearing time. And therefore, we, when I say here, when I discussed earlier that when you apply this graphical method that is the equilibrium criteria of stability, we, we, we do not completely divorce the need for solving 
swing equation but partially we do it wholly or partially this is what was the there partially means partly you have to solve it and suppose the swing curve is required to be solved for say 2 seconds for normal stability steady analysis but in this particular case the time for which it is to be solved is very small suppose the for critical fault clearing time comes out to be say 0.2 second okay then i solve it from 0 to 0.2 second not from 0 to 2 second and therefore this says my time or computation time as i have stated that fault clearing time is sum of the time that the protective relays take to close the circuit breaker trip circuit and the time required for the circuit breaker to interrupt the fault current <coughs> the general conclusion that decrease in fault clearing time improves stability and increases tangent stability limit is just as valid for a multi machine system as for a two machine system this uh, point i stated earlier also again we uh, reiterate that general conclusion is that decrease in fault clearing time improves stability and it improves the tangent stability limit okay now this conclusion is valid for machine infinite bus system two machine system and even for a multi machine system and that is why the efforts have been made all through to reduce the fault clearing time this has been possible by applying fast acting protective relays and fast acting circuit breakers now to illustrate this that how do we calculate the tangent stability limit and obtain a curve relating the tangent stability limit and the fault clearing time we will consider this two machine system a generator in finite bus and consider that the fault occurs at the middle of the line now for this system we can find out the three power angle curves pre fault during the fault and post fault once we know this power angle curves we can apply the equilibria criteria and determine the uh, certain points on the tangent stability limit versus the fault clearing time now we will consider the two extreme cases first case we will consider that the fault is instantaneously clear suppose fault occurs in the system and the time which it takes to clear the fault is instantaneous it doesn't take any time practically it doesn't happen okay now this can also be considered similar to that one transmission line is tripped okay by operating the circuit breakers now in that case if you want to find out what is the tangent stability limit then the approach would be you make use of these two power angle characteristics pre fault output characteristic on the post fault output but during fault we don't require it because the system has not operated with fault on the system now in this case what we will do is this mechanical input line the mechanical input line pm is moved up and down pm is moved up and down till these two areas are equal that is a1 and a2 a1 is the area bounded by mechanical input line the post fault power angle curve this is from delta not to delta 1 and a2 is again the area bounded by the post fault power angle curve and the mechanical input line but they have opposite signs now when these two areas are equal that will give us 
the stability limit that is this pm becomes the stability limit you have what uh, what is to be done is that you have to move this mechanical input line up and down you have to do one or two uh, uh, you know iterations and the moment these two areas become equal that becomes the stability limit because here the fault has been cleared instantaneously now we will take another extreme case where the there is sustained fault on the system that is fault is not clear in this situation we require the two power angle curves one is the pre fault another is the during the fault power angle curve now these two curves are plotted here again the approach will be that you move the mechanical input line up and down till these two areas a1 a2 are equal that is when you do this computations you assume some value of pm you know the value of delta not initial operating angle you can find out what is the value of this angle delta 1 that will depend upon the intersection of mechanical input and fault on power angle curve similarly you can find out delta m which is equal to pi minus delta 1 okay now you you find out this area by process of integration and you equate this with the area a2 in case these two areas are equal then this pm becomes the tangent stability limit with sustained fault now the third situation will be that the fault is cleared in finite time now under this situation we require all the three power angle curves okay now one way is that you move this mechanical input line pm up and down and see that these two areas are equal and but this directly we require the information that what is the fault clearing angle there were, there were there are two parameters involved one is the fault clearing angle another is the mechanical input line the easiest process will be you assume some value of pm and instead of moving this mechanical input line up and down you adjust this clearing angle you let me move this line either on left or on right it means you assume some value of fault clearing angle and see whether these two areas are equal in case you find actually that for a assumed value of angle a1 is greater than a2 move this line on left so that a1 decreases and a2 increases right and you do this exercise till these two areas are equal it means what we have done now here is for given input pm we have obtained the critical clearing angle and then we integrate the swing equation from this point delta not up to this critical clearing angle and find out the corresponding value of critical clearing time now this is the way you can find out a number of points assume some value suppose the value of pm is small you will find that delta c will be very large and a stage may come when delta c will coincide with delta m right that is the case for sustained fault that is when you are moving here right and if this fault you find actually that pm is such that system is stable when delta c equal to delta m that is the condition for sustained fault then when you if you are moving if the pm is moved up and when you have to move this line the moment you find actually the delta critical clearing angle delta c is same as delta not that becomes the instantaneous fault clearing time and therefore by by this approach we can plot 
the curve relating the tangent stability limit versus the fault clearing time in seconds. For example, this graph shows for a typical system on this x axis we are plotting the fault clearing time in seconds, y axis we are plotting the stability limit in per unit and the stability limit of the system when the fault is cleared instantaneously is denoted as 1 per unit and for all other fault clearing time it is going to be less than okay. Now, here actually this point 2 shows the sustained condition because there is a break here in the graph right because when the fault is sustained the stability limit is going to be very small sustained fault condition in the say fault is there and system is not losing stability it means that in that is the situation which occurs only when the fault uh, I am sorry the, the, the power output is small right. Further as we have seen that the <coughs> post fault I am sorry the post fault power angle characteristic depends upon the element which has been removed and the remaining system. Similarly, the during the fault power angle curve is concerned it depends upon the location of fault on the transmission line. Suppose you consider the two machine system and for the whole analysis what we have done is we have assumed the fault in the middle of the line. Suppose I shift the fault location from the middle toward the sending end of the line or you shift this from middle to the receiving end of the line. In that case you will find that the stability limit will be different the curve relating the stability limit versus the fault clearing time will be different. Now, these two curves show the fault at sending end of the line and this saw the fault at middle of the line. Now, you can easily see that if the fault occurs at the sending end of the line okay, what will happen to the power angle curve. Hmm. The during the fault condition during the fault condition no power will be can be transmitted on this when you consider the machine infinite bus system let us say this system right if suppose the fault occurs right at the big sending end of the line then this fault is as good as a fault on this bus okay and therefore the voltage at this bus becomes 0 or it collapses because I am considering here a balanced three phase fault and therefore, no power can be transmitted from generator to the infinite bus right. Therefore, you will find actually the R 2 R 2 which is the multiplying factor R 2 P max sin delta R 2 will become 0. This is a very special case and you will find that the tangent stability limit will be less as compared to when the fault occurs at any other point on the transmission line. That is why these two curves have been plotted to illustrate the effect of location of fault on the transmission line. Now, by applying the equilibria criteria of stability we can find out for a given value of mechanical input and for given fault location we can compute the value of the angle fault clearing angle delta at which the system is just stable that is we can compute the critical clearing angle. For computing the critical clearing angle what is to be done is that you find out this area A 1 that is you integrate you integrate that is A 1 can be written as 
integral of delta naught to delta c p m mechanical input minus p e 1 not p 1 p 2 d delta where p e 2 is equal to r 2 times p max. Sign delta. Okay. Then the area A two can be computed integral delta c to delta m in here here we will be writing this as p e 3 minus p m d delta where p e 3 is equal to r 2 p max sin ok. If you equate these two areas that is you equate a 1 with a 2 and you can find the expression for critical clearing angle or the equation for computing critical clearing angle. This equation has been obtained and it is written as cos delta c equal to delta m minus delta o sin delta o minus r1 cos delta o plus r2 cos delta m divided by r2 minus r1. This, this expression can be derived without any difficulty by equating those two expressions. Now, when you apply this formula, formula you have to ensure that these angles are the delta m delta naught they are they are radius. yes substituted in radians sometimes people commit a mistake they put directly in degrees and therefore the result will be absurd now this angle delta m has to be calculated by using this formula delta m is equal to pi minus sin inverse p m divided by r 2 p max because delta m is delta m is obtained where the where the, the post fault power angle characteristic intersects with mechanical input line it, it intersects at two points one is the angle which is given by this this equation and another will be pi minus this x therefore delta m is equal to pi minus this and therefore and sometimes people commit mistake in computing the value of delta m correctly and where this r1 is the x12 before fault and x12 during fault r2 is x12 before fault x12 after fault that is x12 is the uh, reactance connecting the nodes that is internal voltage of the generator to the infinite bus voltage and this formula is applicable to a two machine system only. We do not have such formula for a <coughs> multi machine system. Now, next point we have to address is how to determine power angle curve for unsymmetrical fault till now till now we have assumed a balanced three phase fault for our analysis and we have also assumed that this three phase fault is a metallic short circuit there is no fault impedance involved under this situation 
the the faulted point is directly connected to the reference bus in the equivalent network and we analyze it but the moment you have uh, unbalanced fault then things cannot be as simple as in a three phase system because as you know actually that unbalanced faults can be analyzed by anal by using the method of symmetrical components okay and when we apply the method of symmetrical components we will come across positive sequence network negative sequence network zero sequence network and we can compute depending upon the type of fault the positive sequence currents negative sequence currents zero sequence currents we also know that how to draw for a given system the positive sequence network negative sequence network and zero sequence network before i tell you how to account for the unsymmetrical fault for determining power angle curve during fault condition we have to understand some basic concepts one basic concept is which i will introduce and explain in subsequent uh discussion the concept of fault shunt now here to uh, before we understand this fault shunt let us understand that since the internal electromotive forces of three phase synchronous machine are of positive sequence that is so far the three phase synchronous generators are concerned we always generate positive sequence voltages we do not generate negative sequence or zero sequence voltages no power results from interaction of positive sequence voltages with negative or zero sequence currents <coughs> although the stator may be carrying negative sequence current zero sequence current but when this negative sequence current interacts with the positive sequence voltages no power is generated no average power is generated similarly no average power is generated when positive sequence voltages interact with zero sequence current okay and therefore to compute the power angle characteristic which basically relates with the power transfer from machine to the infinite bus okay we are we have to we have to compute primarily the positive sequence currents okay and to compute the positive sequence currents as we know actually that during fault condition the positive sequence negative sequence zero sequence networks are connected in a particular fashion if suppose there is a line to ground fault these three networks will be connected in series if there is a line to line fault then these two networks will be connected in parallel looking into the looking into the faulted terminals because we have to look where do we connect in parallel where the fault occurs the two faulted points similarly if it is a double line to ground fault then the three networks will be connected in parallel the the simplest approach to account for the unbalanced or unsymmetrical fault is by connecting a shunt impedance zf at the point of fault that is in the positive sequence network we return the positive sequence network as it is earlier between the fault point and the reference we were connecting zero impedance that is directly connected however when the unbalanced or unsymmetrical fault is there we have to connect an impedance of value zf that is called fault shunt zf the the value of zf depends upon the impedance z2 and z0 of the negative and zero sequence networks no. networks viewed from the point of fault that is zf is function of positive sequence i'm sorry negative sequence and zero sequence impedances here i will without 
uh, derivation right now i'm just giving the result the this table shows the type of short circuit and the fault shunt zf is the impedance of the fault shunt if it is a line to ground fault the value of zf is zo plus z2 if it is a line to line fault the fault shunt impedance is z2 if it is a double line to ground fault it the fault shunt is the parallel combination of zo and z2 and if it is three phase fault zf is zero okay now this table is very important and i will show you actually through illustration how do we get this now uh, a typical statistics of the occurrence of type of faults or frequency of occurrence of type of fault a typical 132 kv system the data is were obtained and out of the total 72 faults which occurred on the system 58 were line to ground faults double line to ground faults were 8 and three phase faults were 6 in fact line to line faults generally gets converted into line to line to ground faults you can see very easily here that the frequency of occurrence of three phase fault is lowest and the the frequency of occurrence of line to ground fault is the highest and therefore in case you design your system or operating <coughs> condition of the system is designed considering three phase fault it means we are very very pessimistic in our approach it means we assume actually that faults are going to be very severe and we are taking a very safe margin however if you apply only considering line to ground fault definitely you are optimistic where you feel that these faults may not occur because if you design considering line to ground fault and if three phase fault occurs system is going to lose stability similarly double line to ground fault occurs it is going to lose stability in case you don't have any margin right and therefore the practices i will tell you what are the practices which are followed uh, for designing the system because we have to make a balance We, we, are, we should not be very optimistic. We should not be very pessimistic in our approach. Before I tell you about the effect of grounding, let us just see how do we account and compute the value of fault shunt impedance Z F. Okay, I have told you actually that fault shunt impedance ZF is different for different fault, and the the table had been shown to show you the expressions. Okay, let us take this simple machine in finite bus problem, where you have a generator, neutral of the generator is grounded, the double circuit transmission line. In this case, I have taken only one transformer. There is no transformer shown here. But if that is there is a transformer here, that can also be considered. This delta star connected transformer with star point grounded in finite bus system. Now, when you solve the problem considering unsymmetrical fault, we need information about positive, negative, and zero sequence reactances of the system components. For generator, X D prime is zero point three five. The negative sequence reactance of the generator is less than X D prime, is 0.24. X naught is the lowest. That is, zero sequence reactance is always low, 0.06. So the transmission line is concerned; its positive and negative sequence reactances are equal. That is, Z1 is 0.4, and J times 0.4. The negative and the negative sequence reactance is also 0.4. The zero sequence reactance of the transmission line is always <coughs> more than the positive or negative, negative sequence reactance. In this case, it is 0.65, the typical values. 
it may be even more actually sometimes 2 to 2.5 times even 2 to 3 uh, three times it all depends upon this <coughs> for a transformer we can assume this x1 x2 x0 equal to 0.1 that is they are equal with this the with the data which we have assumed let us first obtain the positive sequence negative sequence and zero sequence networks the positive sequence network <coughs> is simple it's same as what you do actually for analyzing for a balanced three phase wall condition this is the internal voltage e prime the direct axis tangent reactance I am putting the reactance value only 0 0.35 transmission line reactance 0 0.4 0 0.4 and the transformer reactance here 0 0.1 and the infinite bus voltage 0 0.1 okay this is the voltage V I am showing this as a voltage V now V we shall consider that the fault occurs at the sending end of one of the transmission lines right at this point this is the sending end of the line and therefore I will add in this is as good as the fault occurring at the bus therefore let us call this point as the point P on the and this is our reference now so far the negative sequence network is concerned it is it will have the same structure except that the sources will not be present there are no sources because we do not generate the negative sequence voltages and therefore the negative sequence network can be drawn this is my reference bus ok we call this a O this point continues to be P now what we will do here is that this point we will call as P2 that is the fault point in the negative sequence network and we will call this point as P1 in the positive sequence network. The points are same, P1 and P2 are same on the physical system. The values here are now because in the zero sequence, I am saying a negative sequence network, the generator reactance is 0 0.24 per unit, transmission line is same 0 0.4. 0 0.4 transformer is also 0 0.1 okay. now we can find out the equivalent reactance of the negative sequence network looking into these points p2 and o this exercise when you do you will find actually that equivalent comes out to be a reactance whose value is 0 0.1 3 3 for this problem you can say this is P2 and you can even call this as O2 the reference bus for the negative sequence network therefore these two terminals are important for us the next step is to draw zero sequence I am sorry to draw the uh, zero sequence network for the system now when we draw the zero sequence network we have to consider the connection of transformers 
because transformers may be connected in different modes and we have to also consider the neutral impedance. In case you have put a impedance in the neutral circuit, in the equivalent circuit that impedance will appear as 3 times the actual value. In this particular case, the neutrals have been solidly grounded, therefore they do not appear. The, in this particular case, if you draw this uh, zero sequence network, it will come out to be this value is 0 0.65, this is also 0 0.65, this is 0 0.1, this is 0 0.06, this is the zero sequence reactance of the generator. This is our reference bus. Incidentally, in this connection, the generator neutral is grounded therefore, we can connect the neutral point to the reference. Okay. If we had it not been grounded this would have been open. The transformer is a star delta transformer with star point grounded and therefore, again this point will be connected. Now, those who do not have the practice of drawing the zero sequence network I will advise them to refresh their uh, knowledge about drawing the positive, negative and zero sequence networks, particularly the zero sequence networks considering the different types of transformer connections. Now, here this is the fault point I will call this as a P 0, 0 0 and the equivalent impedance looking into these two terminals was has been computed it comes out to be equal to 0.053. These points are P O and okay. See, so far we have obtained the positive, negative, and zero sequence networks, and we have also obtained the equivalent value of the positive negative sequence impedances for the network considering the fault location. Now in order to consider the effect of different type of fault in the system, right? these three networks have to be connected in a proper fashion. The for line to ground fault which we have considered, these three networks can be connected in this fashion. This diagram shows the positive sequence network and here we have not simplified this network. The fault occurs at the point P 1 in the the G negative sequence network is shown in the terminals P 2 and O 2, while zero sequence impedance is shown between the terminals P O and O O. Now, for simulating line to ground fault, the three networks positive, negative and zero sequence networks are connected in series. Therefore, we can connect these three networks in series that is O 1 is connected to P 2, O 2 is connected to P O and O O is connected to P 1. This becomes a series connection. It can be very clearly seen here that the positive sequence network is modified and here we have now an impedance connected between <coughs> P 1 and O 1. For line to ground fault, the value of the impedance connected is Z 2 plus Z 0 and this becomes the fault shunt. Now, this network can be simplified and put in this simple form here between the node 1 and 3 the reactance is the tangent direct axis tangent reactance of the generator. This is the equivalent reactance of transmission line and the transformer and between this node 3 and O reference node we have connected the fault shunt. If we have considered the lossless system then the fault shunt impedance becomes a pure reactance that is J times accept. This network can be further uh, transformed that is the 
the star connected 3 impedances can be replaced by an equivalent delta connected impedances. This figure shows the equivalent delta, the nodes 1 and 2 are retained, the reference node is also retained as it is. Now, the reactance connecting the node 1 and 2 is x 1 2 and the reactance which is directly coming across the E prime source or source E prime is shown here. Similarly, the reactance coming directly across the infinite bus voltage is also coming and is shown here. Now, the, as we know that these two reactances do not affect the power transfer capability or power transmission capability of the system. Therefore, we concentrate only on the reactance connecting the nodes 1 and 2. Now, for line to ground fault x 1 2 is equal to 0 0.35 plus 0 0.3 plus 0 0.35 into 0 0.3 divided by x f, where x f will be the sum of the two impedances that is 0 sequence and negative sequence impedance. Now, the value of x f will be different for different type of fault. The value of x 1 2 is computed for three different types of unsymmetrical faults. For line to ground fault condition, the x 1 2 is 1.22 per unit. For line to line fault, x 1 2 comes out to be 1.44 per unit and for double line to ground fault, it comes out to be 3.41 per unit. We can see here that the reactance connecting the nodes 1 and 2, which is primarily affects the power flow on the transmission line, uh, increases as we go from line to ground fault to double line to ground fault. If we determine the power angle characteristic during fault considering different type of faults, for line to ground fault for this particular system considered, the power angle characteristic comes out to be P 2 equal to 0 0.82 sin delta. For line to line fault, the power angle curve is P 2 equal to 0 0.695 sin delta and double line to ground fault P 2 is 0 0.293 sin delta. That is if you examine these three uh, power angle curves, we find that the power angle curve with line to ground fault has the highest amplitude while the power, power angle curve corresponding to line to line to ground fault or double line to ground fault is having the smallest amplitude or and hence the, the from the consideration of the tangent stability limit or the power which can be transferred without loss of synchronism, the line to ground fault will provide more tangent stability limit as compared to double line to ground fault. This figure shows the plot of tangent stability limit or power limit as a function of fault duration in seconds. This curve shows the relationship between the tangent stability limit and fault duration for line to ground fault. The second curve is for line to line fault, third curve is for two line to ground fault and the last curve is plotted for a three phase fault. Now, we can easily see here that in case the fault is cleared instantaneously that is when the fault duration is 0, then the tangent stability limit is same in all the four cases and therefore, we can conclude that the tangent stability limit is not affected by the type of fault if the fault is cleared instantaneously. However, if the fault is cleared with time, time delay, then it is very clear actually that the tangent stability limit is lowest when three phase fault occurs and tangent stability limit is highest for line to ground fault. Therefore, we can see that from the point of view of severity, the line to ground fault is the least severe as compared to the three phase fault 
or we can say that three phase fault is the severest fault from the stability consideration. And now we study the effect of grounding on stability. The methods of grounding of a power system modify the zero sequence impedance. This affects the impedance of the fault shunts for representing the ground faults and thereby affect the severity of such faults. A typical two area system has been examined and tangent stability limit is computed for different values of ZS and ZR for a two machine system. Here the value of ZS and ZR are varied from resistive to the reactance value and this table shows that as the as the uh, value of the impedance connected in the neutral of the receiving end side and in the sending end side are varied from ohmic value to the reactance value the stability limit varies. Thus we can say that grounding affects the stability. Now I can say conclude my presentation that today we have examined the effect of fault duration, type of fault, location of fault and the, the uh, grounding on the stability of the system. Thank you. <laughs>